Chapter 1 Enter His Gates with Your Tail Wagging Sadie is the queen of the backyard. That is to say, while my sister and I are away at work, Sadie reigns over all she sees in the backyard. I'm usually the last one to leave in the morning. Before I go, I put Sadie's collar on her. Then, with Sadie almost jumping for joy, I lead her to the door with a huge bowl of popcorn in my hand. She hastens outside onto the patio and promptly sits and looks up expectantly at me. Then comes the moment she's waited for. I throw a handful of popcorn over her head, then another to her right, and a third to her left. But she never even sees the second and third launches. She already has her head down, gobbling up the popcorn as fast as she can eat it. I tell her goodbye, then I'm off to work, and Sadie starts her day outside. She never looks up. But boy, is it a different story at the end of the day. When the back door opens and Sadie sees I'm home, her attention is all on me. If you have a dog, and I'm guessing you probably do because you're reading this, you know what I'm talking about. What joy, what exuberance, what energy, what a greeting. I'm not sure what your dog does, but when Sadie runs in the door when I get home, and I mean runs, her tail is up and wagging, her body unable to do anything but sprint at maximum speed. Around the couch, stop, bark, a quick check to see if I'm following, I usually am. Turn, run the other direction, bark, and the game usually ends with both of us panting and sitting together on a couch, happy to be together. It's pure canine joy, and I love it. After one of these very happy welcomes from Sadie at the end of the day, I remember thinking if a golden retriever had written Psalm 100 verse 4, it would have said something along the lines of, Enter his gates with your tails wagging. She is the living, breathing, four-legged example of what it looks like to make an entrance expressing complete joy. For more than a year, the idea of entering God's presence with my tail wagging didn't do more than make me smile as I thought about how that kind of full-blown joy might gladden God's heart. And as a matter of fact, if that's all that can be gained from this comparison, that's still quite a lot. Oh, that I could give God the kind of pleasure that Sadie gives me when she goes completely off the charts with joy each time I come home. But if I'm honest with myself, most of the time, I don't enter God's presence with a Sadie-like natural exuberance. Most of the time, I enter with my head and my heart far away, preoccupied. So although it doesn't come to me naturally as it does for Sadie, I think there's a lot to learn from her about the right way to approach God. One thing that's obvious is that Sadie anticipates my presence. She knows what time I ordinarily arrive home from work each day, and you can bet she's close by the back door, listening and waiting. The minute she hears me inside or the light goes on, she's scratching on the door letting me know she's ready to come in. Scripture is filled with passages telling of the writer's longing for God's presence. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. Psalm 42, verse 1. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Psalm 63, verse 1. At night, my soul longs for you. Indeed, my spirit within me seeks you diligently. Isaiah 26, verse 9. Clearly, the saints of old experienced times when they felt deep yearning for fellowship with God. In many of those contexts, the longing for God was during a time of either spiritual dryness or of trial. What they had in common was their understanding that only in the presence of the one for whom they longed would they experience consolation and complete satisfaction within their souls. External factors might have created the longing, but they knew that only God could satisfy it. I think that's one reason Sadie waits at the door for me. Her experience has taught her that when the door opens, her longing for fellowship and let's face it, popcorn, will be satisfied, but only in the presence of the one who opens the door. The application here is pretty straightforward. 
I will anticipate God's presence more and move joyfully into His presence when I remember His goodness. When I recall that nothing satisfies the deepest longings of my heart like fellowship with Him. When I reflect that every truly good thing I have in life is from His loving hand.